Alright, moving on with our simple level, our next step is going to be to create the brush for the ceiling. Now we're going to start off simply just by taking the floor brush, duplicating it, and moving it up. However, we're then going to make things a bit more complicated and perform some modeling operations on the ceiling brush using geometry mode so that this back room has kind of an elevated ceiling. And you'll see what I'm talking about as we move forward. So here in the perspective view, I'm going to click on the maximize viewport button. And then I'm going to switch this over to brush wireframe mode so that we can see all of the various brushes that are making up our level. Now I'm going to select the floor brush and holding down the alt key, I'm going to drag this up and just place it right here on top of the level. Now if we take a look inside the level, our lights are kind of close to the ceiling. So I'm going to grab my lights holding down control so I can select them both and we'll just kind of center these up on the room. Now if we switch back over to lit mode, currently we don't have a ceiling, but as soon as I recalculate my geometry, boom, there we go. So we've got a very simple ceiling, and I suppose we could just leave it at that, but that wouldn't be any fun. So let's make something just a little bit more interesting. I'm going to go right back outside the level and switch back over to brush wireframe mode. Now, let's deselect the lights, and I'm going to select this brush that we just created and switch over to geometry mode here in the toolbox. Now, the first thing I want to do is kind of divide off this square room at the back versus this sort of beveled room that we have kind of toward the front of our level. So I'm going to select this top edge that's nearest us. And you got to be really precise with your selection. There we go. So now we have that edge selected. I'm going to click the split button. And I want this split to line up with the right hand edge of the central wall. This is probably most easily seen in the top view. So I'll demaximize the viewport and let's maximize the top view. Basically, I want this edge that we just created to line up right here along this wall that I've just highlighted in red for us. All right, so selecting this top brush, I'm going to hold down Control and Alt and drag a marquee selection box around these vertices. And if you take a close look, currently these verts are not lining up with the grid. So just right click on either one of them and that will jump them both over on top of the grid. Now I just need to move them over one grid space. And there we go. They're lining up with the outer edge of that wall. Okay, so that's done. Let's go back over to our perspective view. And we can see that our ceiling brush has now been divided nicely. So I'm going to select this polygon here over this square back room. And I want to extrude this up into the air. So here in my geometry tools window, I'm going to click the extrude radio button. I want you to set your length to 256. Then click apply. And that will extrude this up into the air. Now, if we pull back from the entire room, you can see it, it almost kind of makes like a tugboat shape, how we've got this kind of extrusion popping up back here. But now we're going to change the shape of this extrusion by manipulating some vertices. So what I want you to do is to go into either the front or side view. It doesn't really matter which, because we're going to do the same thing in both views, one after the other. So I'm going to take this front view here, and we'll maximize it to make it nice and big. And what I want you to do is grab the vertices here at the back, kind of the upper left corner in this view. Now, you can either marquee select or just as kind of an added shortcut. Because you have two vertices that three-dimensionally are stacked right on top of each other, you can just click one and UDK will automatically grab the vertex right behind it, which is very convenient. I want you to move this vertex to the right 256 units. Now, if you look down at the bottom of the screen in the, con uh, the console bar, the very bottom, you can see that we are indeed moving that over 256 units. It actually gives you some feedback. But if you can't see that for some reason, really all we're trying to do is get a nice 45-degree diagonal line right through our grid marks. So now let's do the same thing over here. I'm just going to click on these vertices, move them to the left, 256 units. And there we go. So now we've taken care of the shape in this view. Now I'm going to demaximize this viewport and go over to the side view. And now we'll maximize this view. And we're going to do the same thing. So let's grab the vertices in the upper left corner. We're going to slide these to the right, 256 units. And now let's take the ones over here and we'll slide these to the left, 256 units. Awesome. Now, let's demaximize and take another look over here in perspective, and you can see the shape that we've just created. So we have a nice bevel, but it's only on top of the surface. If we bring the camera down inside this room and switch back over to lit mode, we haven't really affected the underside, and I can prove that by going ahead and building our geometry. 
and everything looks just like it did a moment ago. There's no particular change. So in order to fix this, we need to do something similar to the underside of the ceiling as well, kind of extruding that upward. So let me switch back over to brush wireframe view, and I'm going to maximize the perspective view. Looking at this brush from underneath, I'm going to select this polygon down here on the bottom. Now let's extrude this out. So I'm going to switch back over to extrude mode, and I'm going to pull my length down a bit. So instead of 256, let's just move this 32 units. We'll click apply, and all that did is just kind of bring that face down a little bit, as you can see here. Now what I want to do is inset this face. So I'm going to come over here to edit mode. Make sure you switch from extrude over to edit. And I'm going to tap the space bar and switch over to my scale widget, which you can see here. It looks like three cubes all kind of combined with some red lines. What I want you to do is to drag upward with your mouse. So in my case, it's upward. It may depend a little bit on your camera orientation. And what that's doing is that's scaling this face down. If I pull back a little bit, it'll be a little easier to see. See how we're just kind of scaling that face? I want you to pull that in just a little bit. It doesn't really matter how much at this point. And once you're done with that, let's jump over to a top view. So I'm going to demaximize the perspective viewport and switch over to the top view. Now, I just scaled that in about 5%, and I got exactly what I was looking for, but perhaps it's a little bit different on your end, so let's talk about moving these vertices. The four vertices that we just created, if I maximize the top view, are this vertex, this vertex, this vertex, and this one up here. So these kind of four inside corner vertices. What we want is for these to be lined up with the inner thickness of the walls, which in my case, they already are. But just to give you an illustration of what might happen if you had kind of a different amount of scale, what I'm going to do is grab this polygon again, and I'm going to scale this in really far, and then we'll take a look at actually moving these manually. So now let's go back over here to the top view. So I'll just start with this one vertex, and I'm going to tap the space bar to get my translation or move widget. And we'll slide this to the left, and then slide it up. Now check it out. On that second movement, notice that it tried to move the entire brush. So do be aware of that. Make sure you reselect the vertex if you need to. And we're going to move that to just the inside corner. Now notice, as I did that, we got a lot of extra edges that just suddenly appeared. That's because our, our polygon face that's defined by these vertices is suddenly non-planar. But don't worry, we'll clean that up here in just a moment. So now let's grab this next vertex, and I'm going to slide this to the right. Make sure we select it again, and then we'll slide it up a little bit. And we'll just repeat this process all the way around. So we'll slide this guy out and slide him down. So we're just matching him to the inside walls. And this is our last one. Now this one I'm actually going to move in both vertices, or both axes at the same time. All right, so that takes care of that. However, if we switch over to a side view, things are going to look just a little bit funny. So let's take... Say, so this is technically the front view, but it shows the side of the level. Now, things are brought inward, like in the X and Y axes, as much as they need to, but it's not level with the underside of our ceiling. So what I'm going to do, if I pull back, I'm going to draw a marquee selection box around these four vertices here at the bottom, and I'm just going to slide these up one grid space. And that levels off the underside of our ceiling. So all we've done is we've created a nice inset so that the polygon that sits in the center of our ceiling is lined up with the inside of our walls. All right, so let's demaximize this viewport, and I'm going to jump back over to perspective. In fact, if I enlarge perspective, it'll probably be even easier to see what we just did. So I'm going to select that polygon in the center, and now you can see that bordering this polygon, we have a nice inset that is the exact same thickness as our walls. However, we also have these extra edges that, have, that came in when we started moving vertices around, if those are distracting to you, then a way to get rid of them is simply to select your brush in its entirety. So just deselect and then reselect the brush, and you'll see there's an optimize button you can click here, and that will get rid of any edges that are unnecessary for our shape. Now, I just accidentally moved the brush, so let's make sure we don't do that. I'll just slide that back up a little bit, and there we go. So it simplified our brush, got rid of any excess edges, and you can see how that works. All right, now, let's go ahead and get out of, well, we don't necessarily want to get out of geometry mode just yet. We have one last thing we want to do. We still have this inset polygon that we have here in the center. We actually want to inset this one more time. 
and this is so that we can create a raised area in the center of our room. This time we're going to do it in kind of a special way. I'm going to grab our extrude option again here inside our geometry tools. I'm going to tap spacebar and then just scale this face down a little bit and watch as I do this. We actually get an extrusion that is also an inset. So you see how that worked? Connects the edges all the way back to their original positions. So now with that done, I'm going to switch back to edit mode, tap the spacebar to go back over to my translation widget, and I can just slide this up into the air. And you see how that creates a nice beveled area inside my ceiling. Now currently it's not exact. It doesn't line up perfectly, but it's pretty close. We can actually go into the side viewports and clean that up a little bit. So I'll demaximize the perspective view. Let's come over to our side view and I'll just maximize that first. And really all I'd like to see here are some nice 45 degree angles, which means I'm going to start with this vertex and slide it to the left once. We'll grab this vertex and slide it to the right. And you can see how that cleans everything up and makes our lines nice and parallel. So now we'll demaximize that view. And let me switch my geometry tools over and we'll maximize our front view. And we're just going to do the same thing. So we'll slide this over and slide this over. Now with that done, we're finished with geometry mode. So let's switch back over to camera mode before we accidentally nudge something that we shouldn't. I'll demaximize this view and go back over to the perspective view. Now we need to see the result, so we have to regenerate our geometry. So what I'm going to do is switch back over to lit mode, click build geometry, and there we go. So now we have a ceiling that bevels up near the top. We can just kind of come down here near the floor and take a look up at that. And you can see how it kind of goes to a smaller surface up near the top. And with that, we have completed all of the primary BSP for our level. So at this point, go ahead and save your level and then we'll move forward.